journey into the remarkable life of Martin Peters, a member of England's legendary 1966 World Cup winning team. Celebrated for his intelligent play and versatility on the pitch, Peters was a football maestro whose contributions to the sport are etched in history. His story is one of triumph, resilience, and an enduring legacy that has left an indelible mark on English football. From Wembley's hallowed turf to the bustling grounds of West Ham and Tottenham, Peters' journey in football is a tale of a player ahead of his time, whose skills and tactical awareness were unparalleled. Born on November 8, 1943 in East London, Martin Peters' football journey began against the backdrop of a city recovering from the ravages of war. Growing up in Plaistow, Peters was drawn to football from a young age, his passion kindled in the streets and playgrounds where the post-war generation found hope and excitement in the beautiful game. His early years were a mix of raw talent and a deep-seated love for football, fostered in a community where the sport was more than just a game, it was a way of life. Martin Peters' professional football career began at West Ham United, the club that had nurtured his development from a young talent to a professional player. Joining the first team in 1962, Peters quickly made an impact, showcasing his versatility and technical skills. At West Ham, he evolved from a promising young player to a key figure in the team, admired for his ability to play multiple positions effectively. His time at West Ham was a period of significant growth and achievement. Under the guidance of manager Ron Greenwood, Peters developed a sophisticated understanding of the game, becoming known for his ability to read plays and adapt to different tactical situations. His intelligent approach to football, coupled with his technical ability, made him a standout player in the team. Peters' years at West Ham set the stage for a remarkable career that would see him achieve great heights both at the club and international levels. His journey from the streets of Plaistow to the first team at West Ham is a testament to his talent, hard work and the indomitable spirit that defined his approach to the game. The meteoric rise of Martin Peters in the world of football is a testament to his extraordinary talent and versatility. At West Ham United, he established himself not just as a competent player, but as a visionary on the field, often described as being 10 years ahead of his time by his England manager, Alf Ramsey. His ability to seamlessly transition between different positions, coupled with his knack for finding the back of the net, made him an invaluable asset to both his club and country. Peter's reputation as a top-class midfielder was solidified with his performances for West Ham, where he played a pivotal role in the team's successes. His intelligence, technical skill and tactical understanding set him apart from his contemporaries. By the late 1960s, Peters had become one of the most admired players in English football, known for his unique playing style that combined grace and effectiveness in equal measure. Martin Peters' football journey did not end at West Ham United. After a successful stint with the Hammers, he went on to make significant contributions to other clubs, further solidifying his status as a footballing visionary. In 1970, Peters made a high-profile move to Tottenham Hotspur, where he continued to shine on the pitch. His time at Tottenham was marked by yet another milestone in his career, as he helped the club win the UEFA Cup in 1972. His versatility and tactical awareness continued to be an asset for his team, making him a key figure in Tottenham's midfield. After his spell with Tottenham, Peters went on to play for Norwich City and Sheffield United before eventually retiring from professional football. Throughout his club career, he consistently demonstrated his ability to adapt to different playing styles and situations, showcasing the remarkable versatility that had become his trademark. Off the field, Martin Peters remained deeply involved in football. He transitioned into coaching and management roles, sharing his wealth of knowledge and experience with the next generation of footballers. His contributions to the sport extended beyond his playing days, leaving an enduring mark on the footballing world. Internationally, Martin Peters' career was marked by his integral role in England's 1966 World Cup winning team. His performances during the tournament, particularly in the final against West Germany, where he scored a crucial goal, showcased his exceptional ability on the global stage. Peter's goal in the final was a pivotal moment, contributing to England's historic 4-2 victory and securing their first and only World Cup title. Peter's international career spanned eight years, during which he earned 67 caps and scored 20 goals. 
He was known for his sportsmanship and fair play, a quality that earned him respect worldwide. His ability to score important goals, including the one in the 1970 World Cup quarterfinal against West Germany, further highlighted his status as a versatile and strategic player. His contributions to the England team were characterised by his unselfish play and his uncanny ability to be in the right place at the right time, earning him the nickname The Ghost. Peter's legacy in international football is not only defined by his skill and achievements, but also by the exemplary character and sportsmanship he displayed throughout his career. Martin Peters' exceptional contributions to football were acknowledged through numerous awards and honours throughout his career. His talent and impact on the sport were recognised from early on, as he quickly established himself as one of England's rising stars. One of the early milestones in his career was being named the Football Writers Association Footballer of the Year in 1966, the same year England won the World Cup. This prestigious award highlighted his outstanding performances and contributions to the game. At the international level, Peters received accolades for his role in England's historic 1966 World Cup triumph. He was not only a key figure in the team's victory, but also received personal recognition when he was awarded the silver ball as the second best player of the tournament, just behind his teammate Bobby Charlton. Beyond the football pitch, Martin Peters led a fulfilling personal life. He was known for his humility, sportsmanship and dedication to his family. Peters was married to his wife Kathleen and they had three children together. After concluding his playing career, Martin Peters made a transition to football management, a move that allowed him to continue his involvement in the sport from a different perspective. His wait to become a manager was relatively short, as his final game as a player took place on January 17, 1981, against Gillingham. Sheffield United supporters demonstrated during this significant game because manager Harry Haslam was unable to attend due to illness. The very next day, Martin Peters retired as a player and assumed the role of manager for Sheffield United. At the time of his appointment, the club was 12th in the table with 16 games remaining in the season. However, despite his efforts to reverse the team's fortunes, Peters faced a challenging task. Under his management, Sheffield United managed to win just three of the remaining games. Unfortunately, for the first and only time in the club's history, they were relegated to the fourth division, marking a difficult period in their history. In light of the relegation, Martin Peters decided to step down from his managerial role. While his managerial stint with Sheffield United had its challenges, it should be noted that he had already left an indelible mark on the world of football during his illustrious playing career. Even after retiring as a player and manager, Martin Peters' love for the game remained undiminished. In the 1982-83 season, he made a return to the field, this time playing in defence for Galston in the Eastern Counties League. This final chapter in his playing career demonstrated his enduring passion for football, a sentiment that defined his lifelong dedication to the sport. In total, when considering his playing career, managerial role and later return to playing, Martin Peters made a remarkable 882 appearances and scored an impressive 220 goals. His football career, which was characterised by tenacity, adaptability and unwavering dedication, is still a crucial part of the sport's history. After retiring from professional football, Martin Peters embarked on a new chapter in his life, exploring diverse career opportunities while maintaining his connection to the sport that had defined him. In 1984, he transitioned into the insurance business, where he worked for several years until an unfortunate redundancy in July 2001. This career shift showcased Peter's adaptability and his ability to succeed in different fields beyond football. Throughout his life, Peters remained deeply connected to the clubs he had represented during his playing career. In 1998, he took on a non-executive role on the board of directors at Tottenham Hotspur, serving as a supporter liaison. His involvement allowed him to bridge the gap between the club and its devoted fan base. He held this role for four years before stepping down, but continued to contribute by welcoming guests in the hospitality suites at the club's White Hart Lane ground. In a testament to his enduring connection with West Ham United, Martin Peters also worked in the hospitality suites at Upton Park for the club's home matches further highlighting his commitment to both clubs he had graced with his presence as a player.
In 2006, Peters shared his remarkable life story with the world through his autobiography, titled The Ghost of 66. In this book, he offered a first-hand account of his journey in football, providing insights into the triumphs, challenges, and memorable moments that defined his career. In recognition of his exceptional achievements as a player, Martin Peters was inducted into the English Football Hall of Fame in 2006. This honour, bestowed upon him alongside former manager Ron Greenwood, celebrated his enduring impact on the sport and solidified his status as one of football's enduring legends. Martin Peters' life after football was characterised by a diverse range of experiences, from the business world to his continued involvement with the clubs and fans who held him in such high regard. His autobiography, induction into the Hall of Fame, and contributions off the field all contributed to his enduring legacy in the world of football. In his later years, Martin Peters faced health challenges that were related to his football career. Like many former footballers of his generation, he battled with degenerative joint issues, particularly in his knees, which were a result of the physical demands of playing professional football during that era. These health challenges, including arthritis, affected his mobility and quality of life. Despite the physical discomfort, Peters remained a respected figure in the football community and continued to be involved in various football-related activities, including attending events and supporting charitable causes. Sadly, Martin Peters passed away on December 21, 2019, at the age of 76. His death marked the end of an era in English football, as he was one of the last surviving members of the legendary 1966 World Cup winning team, the footballing community and fans all over the world mourned his contributions to the sport, both as a player and as a gentleman of the game. Martin Peters' legacy in football endures through his remarkable career and his impact on the sport. He will always be remembered for his intelligence, versatility and significant role in England's 1966 World Cup triumph, his influence extended beyond the pitch as he continued to be an inspirational figure to younger generations of footballers. Peter's passing serves as a reminder of the physical toll that professional football can take on its players, and it highlights the importance of ongoing efforts to support the health and well-being of former footballers.